I'm Lynn Smith, and welcome to the Bigfoot Project. My name is Emily, and my husband and I had an encounter with something large in the woods of southern Missouri on June 2nd of this year. In the afternoon, I heard a huge tree fall in the woods in the direction of the river about five minutes after my husband left me at the camp to walk down to the water. About 30 seconds to a minute after the crash, I heard three tree knocks, a pause, and then three more with the same pattern on the opposite side of the river. A couple of times we heard snorts that sounded like wild hogs, but never saw anything. I had got into the tent around 10.30. My husband stayed around the campfire until around midnight. He went out onto the road after putting out the tiki torches and fire and heard a growling. He's not one to be freaked out by noises and such, but he was a little unnerved by it. He got into the tent and told me about it. We talked for a couple of minutes before saying goodnight. Less than five minutes after we stopped talking, we both heard rustling in the leaves from a distance. We both lifted our heads and listened intently as the footsteps came closer. We both agreed the footsteps were heavy. We've hunted in the woods before, and it was not a deer. I would describe the sound as walking in the woods with boots on. My initial thought was, maybe this is the man we rented the camping site from messing with us, and it's part of the experience. But then I realized he would be real stupid to do that for fear of being shot. Bigfoot never crossed my mind. I was frozen in fear. It was walking directly behind our tent, probably within three feet of our heads. It sounded like it walked around the campfire ring and then off into the woods toward the water. We were absolutely silent while it was in camp. As soon as we realized it had walked away, I began shaking uncontrollably. I've never felt fear like that, and I have never reacted to fear this way. My husband was trying to reassure me when we heard it returning after two minutes later. I grabbed the key fob to our van and hit the lock button so the lights would light up and hopefully scare away whatever it was. I did that four times, and it walked off into the woods on the other side of the road behind our tent. We heard what sounded like a fight going on between two animals in that direction, and I hit the lights again a couple of times, and the noise had stopped. I knew I wouldn't be able to sleep in the tent anymore, so we moved into the van for the rest of the night. I didn't look for Bigfoot signs because, again, Bigfoot didn't cross my mind until we got home that evening, and we honestly thought it was probably a bobcat. But after looking at pictures of bobcats, we both agreed a bobcat wouldn't be big enough to make the sounds we heard. My husband has never been a believer in Bigfoot. I have been for years, but never had an experience like this. I played several videos of animal sounds for him, trying to identify the growl he heard. He said no to everything except a supposed Bigfoot growl. He said that was very close to what he heard. In the same video of the growl, you could hear footsteps of the creature, and they sounded almost identical to the steps we heard that night. We heard snorts again the next morning, but that very well could have been hogs. I sent a text to the owner the next morning, asking if he knew what it might be. He said most likely deer, or Bigfoot. Then he listed several other animals he knew were on the property. I know none of the animals he listed could make those sounds, except Bigfoot. I haven't been able to stop thinking about this experience since it happened. A couple days after we got home, I sent another text to the owner and told him about our experience, and asked if he had ever had an experience and if he was serious about his Bigfoot comment. He said he was intrigued and wanted to know more, so I shared our story. I got the feeling he knows more than what he told us. He said he did catch something on his trail cam the night of June 2nd, and then directed me to his Facebook page where he posted it. It was an orb. The timestamp said 11.11 p.m., 45 minutes before our encounter. I thought it was pretty creepy. I am convinced more than ever that it was a Bigfoot that visited our camp that night, and I just had to share. Thanks. In September of 2015, my friend Bill and I were going up to my in-law's cabin to do a little drinking over the weekend and a little scouting around for the following hunting season. They own approximately 80 acres of pristine wilderness and open acreage. This property is located not far from a small town called Gleason, Wisconsin, pretty much central Wisconsin. I brought my dog, Nova. Bill came alone. I got there Friday around noon, and Bill showed up approximately 3 o'clock. 
We didn't do much the first day. We just sat around and drank some beers, ran into town and had dinner, came back. We just sat down on the front porch of the cabin and enjoyed nature. Nothing happened. It was simply a beautiful evening. We retired into the cabin about 10. That following morning, I grabbed my rifle, which had a three-point sling on it, and I went into the woods. He was going to grab his and follow along eventually. That day, we both spent most of the day tromping through the woods looking for deer sign and deer tracks so we knew where to set up our stands for the following hunting season. During the early evening, we saw a fox across a field. Other than that, we just saw a couple of rabbits, a couple of squirrels here and there, nothing in particular. Nova loved running through the woods and, as always, collecting wood ticks. But things were about to change, which we did not know. We decided to cook on the grill outside. We had dinner about six, and Nova started barking to the east, where the wood line started, approximately 50 to 75 feet away. We didn't see anything or hear anything, but I felt kind of uneasy. Bill didn't say anything about it. For some reason, I felt I needed to keep Nova chained up, so I put the chain on her so she wouldn't run off. She usually didn't, but I just didn't feel right. Something was wrong, and I couldn't place my finger on it. That evening, after cooking some hamburgers and hot dogs on the grill, we called it a day, and it had been a long day already. As we laid in our separate beds, Bill told me he had been feeling uneasy at about supper time. I didn't tell him that I felt the same way. Bill is kind of a nervous person, so I didn't want to freak him out. That night, we were both awakened by a large, loud scream that seemed to be coming from right outside the front door of the cabin. I'm quite familiar with the animals here in Wisconsin, and I knew it wasn't a cougar. I knew it was not a fox or a coyote. It only happened twice, and then it stopped just like that. We didn't hear anyone walk up or anything walk away, for that matter, and it was loud enough to wake us both out of a deep sleep. The following morning, Sunday, after breakfast, it was now approximately noon. I grabbed my AR-15 with my sling on, and out to the woods I went. There's a trail to the right which went to the west side of the cabin. I took that into the woods, approximately 35 yards, and took another deer trail that went to the south, approximately 50 yards, and followed the trail as it went around to the left. I got to be what would be about 20 feet into the tree line, and approximately straight across from the cabin, but at least 60 yards away from the cabin. I was stopped in my tracks by loud gunfire coming from the east, and then I heard a loud screaming. I can't even explain what I heard. But as the shooting was going on, the screaming intensified. The screaming was so loud, it seemed like it was right next to me. I started walking to the east and got about 25 feet when I heard something behind me running, snapping twigs and rustling leaves. Before I could even turn around, something hit me on my right side, knocking me to the ground. As I got up, I looked to my left and I saw nothing. I looked to the right and I saw what I can only describe as a huge figure approximately seven to seven and a half feet tall, and in its right hand, it was pulling another little creature. All I can say is a baby creature, which was about three feet tall, and it was trying to keep up with the taller one. It was running in the direction of the screaming and gunshots, which were coming from the east of me. I looked and saw that Bill was out of the cabin with his rifle and a pair of binoculars, which I found later was focused on the creature. I still have to go in for an MRI, I believe I tore my rotator cuff that had never healed from that day. All Bill could tell me was, I told you, I told you, I told you, there was something wrong last night. It was an effing Bigfoot. I'm going to try and keep this as short as possible, but I have had about a half dozen encounters with what I used to think, but now know, was a Sasquatch or something thereof. My cousin and my brother have spent the past week talking about all our encounters here in Arizona, off on the Mogollon Rim, and at our family ranch north of Wickenburg. The timing worked out where my brother, who's active in the military, is in town and is staying with us, so the three of us have been reliving these experiences, trying to find answers. The first memory was at our family ranch out in the middle of the desert, where the nearest house or living human is a 45-minute drive down a dirt road. I was about 14 or 15, and my brother is two years younger than me. He and I heard the horses making a ton of noise down in the pasture in the creek that runs alongside the mountain the ranch house sits on. We walked to the edge of the slope of the mountain where we could see below, 
and saw the horses huddled together in the middle of our fenced-in pasture. We caught glances of what we thought was a coyote in between the brush, so we yelled down and made some noise. As soon as we did, this thing took off down the wash toward the Hassayampa River. We saw it running, and it was big and black. It was kind of like a dog, but was 90 to 100 yards away below us in the wash, so it was hard to tell. It darted between the mesquite and the brush, but it was jet black. If it was canine, it was the biggest one I had ever seen. Running on all fours, its back had to be as high as my chest at the time, but it was very bulky. When we asked our grandpa about it, he said it was a bear, but we've never seen a bear move that fast or agile. We had another encounter while sitting on the porch of the ranch house at night a few years later. My cousin and I were sitting on the porch with a girl from Germany, and the rest of the family was inside. About 30 yards away, just outside the light coming from the sliding glass door, we heard some movement for a few minutes, then the deepest growl I could have possibly ever imagined. It lasted for a few seconds, and my cousin and I slowly got to our feet. We looked at each other terrified and pulled our guns out. The second I cocked the hammer back on my revolver, the growl turned into this terrifying scream. It didn't sound like the typical woman scream you hear about. It sounded like a dinosaur. We threw open the door and slammed it shut, and our family told us we looked like we had just seen a ghost. Neither of us slept that night. Another time, I was around 19. My brother and a different cousin of ours had walked about a mile up to the river to do some target shooting with a shotgun. We didn't have a lot of time before dinner, so we were shooting only for 10 or 15 minutes before we headed back home. Walking down the creek, we saw a jet black raven sitting in the middle of the creek. It was huge and wasn't afraid of us. It had to sit two and a half feet tall, and I have never seen a raven out there in that area. We walked by and didn't think anything of it, but as we got close to the house, we saw a massive black creature on the side of the wash in the brush. At the time, we thought it was a bull, but even then we thought it was pretty strange to see one off on its own that close to the house. Ten to fifteen seconds later, when we turned to look back at it, it was completely gone. We asked our grandpa about a big black bull, and he told us we didn't have any. My next experience, I was 23 when I went off camping off the young road up on the Mogollon Rim with some buddies. After the sun went down, we had a fire going and started hearing what we all thought was a woman screaming off in the distance. Over a minute or two, the scream got closer until it was just outside the firelight and less than 30 yards from us. We were all freaked out since it sounded like it was a woman dying. We called out and shined our flashlights toward it, but we never got a response or saw anything. Over a period of an hour, we heard some sounds nearby, but eventually it got quiet and then we started hearing the screams again, but they were moving away from us. We all slept in the truck that night and left in the morning. My last encounter again near the Mogollon Rim was with my cousin Chris, his wife and a friend from work, and his wife. The story is pretty long, but we heard screams in the forest during the day, and after the sun went down, we started to hear whistles coming in from at least three different positions, getting closer to us. We saw red, green, and white lights coming down one of the hills that bordered the wash we were camping in. They were soft lights, like a glow stick in the distance. We could hear branches breaking and someone walking up the road. We would go out to look and could never find anything. The whistles and noises would ebb and flow, but during a quiet period, our friend and his wife went to their tent. The noises started up again, and our dogs went so crazy we had to put them all in the truck. My cousin, his wife, and I sat on his tailgate near the fire, listening to at least three distinct whistles coming from different areas like we were being flanked. His wife didn't read too much into it, but we were terrified. I get tears in my eyes just thinking about it. When one of the whistles got within 40 yards and right on the creek, I whistled into the dark, and this thing immediately whistled right back to me in the exact same tone. The three of us panicked, we woke up our friends, packed up our camp within 10 minutes, and left there in the middle of the night. And that's all for now. I had an encounter with a Sasquatch while raccoon hunting. It was back in the late 80s near a winery in northeastern Georgia. 
Back then, the area we were hunting, it was very rural. It's since become very populated. We were hunting on a big piece of land we referred to as Beard's Pasture. The Mulberry River ran through the property, and we had to cross it due to the dogs treeing a raccoon on the other side of the river. The owner, Mr. Chandler, wanted us to keep a lookout for any holes in the fence line as we had several calves and a few of his heifers go missing. A few weeks before our encounter, we discovered one of the seven to 800 pound cows across all the fences and the river as well, which puzzled us as to how it got over there, and even more so, her neck was bent at a very unnatural angle, as if something had jumped on its back and reached over, pulling the head all the way back to the spine and twisting it in a full circle in the process. Strange to say the least. On the night of our encounter, our dogs were running when all of a sudden, a howl stopped the dogs from barking instantly. It was close to the Ohio howl, and even though it was 500 plus yards away, it was really loud. As soon as it finished the howl, Mr. Chandler told me to load the gun. I remember saying that it's just a 22. It's just going to piss off whatever howled that loudly. It sounded massive, as the volume and length were just incredible. We stood there calling our dogs to come back after a few minutes. Then we saw several sets of eyes coming at us. It was our coon hounds, and they were scared and whimpering. I said I had my 30 odd six in the truck as it was deer season. We made a large circle, staying a good distance from the woodline and river. Coon dogs are normally fearless. We had treed bobcats and even a black bear before. But when we got close to the truck, they jumped in their dog boxes and laid down, one under the truck growling at me when I tried to get him out from under it. After retrieving my deer rifle and turning the truck toward the tree line, I could light up the field and woods as to see whatever it was. Mr. Chandler started mocking the howl, and we could hear what sounded like a bulldozer coming through the woods. It stopped just on the other side of the river, and it started making a grunting noise mixed with a growl and Chandler continued mocking every sound it made. It started thrashing the trees and bush, seeming to go from side to side and intensifying its efforts. At this point, I couldn't see it. I climbed in the back of the truck and was looking through the scope of my rifle on the roof of it. I could see a 15-foot tree above the underbrush, and all of a sudden it broke it and threw it in the river. A few days later, I returned and saw the tree was broken off eight feet off the ground, and it was three to four inches in diameter. All of a sudden, we heard a big splash, and it jumped in the river and was coming toward us. It started up the bank, and I could see the eye shine and a faint outline of an upright man-shaped figure. It looked three to four feet wide, and at that point, I didn't think a odd 6 was good enough. Maybe a headshot would be the only way to drop it. I get the feeling that Mr. Chandler knew what it was. He asked, did I have a shot? I said yes, but I didn't know what the hell it was and fearing my father's wrath, I couldn't pull the trigger. About the time I could see the eyes, another howl came from way down the river. Mr. Chandler immediately said, Boys, it's time we got out of here. And I think he was right. That howl could have been one of those things, but we have no way of knowing, and how many there actually were. So we left. At the time, I really had no idea what it had been. Sure, we'd heard of Bigfoot on TV and watched the movie The Legend of Boggy Creek, but I really thought it was an old wives' tale. That's the encounter in a nutshell, but I have more strange happenings as well, like the time my father went toward an orb of light that was creepy as hell, and others. But thanks anyways. Hi, I'm going to tell you about this encounter, but I want to stay anonymous. I was turkey hunting in the spring of 2008 in Illinois. I had roosted some turkeys the night before, so I knew the location of the gobblers I would be hunting the next day. The next morning, I got set up, probably a hundred yards from where the turkey roosted the night before. It was just breaking day, and I hadn't heard anything, and usually the turkeys start gobbling around that time of the morning. As it started to get lighter, I heard what sounded like a cow coming through the timber. I immediately stood up, but keeping a low profile, and that's when I seen a huge, hairy creature walking about a hundred yards from me. Now I have a 12 gauge gun loaded with three and a half in magnum turkey loads and I didn't even want to shoot this thing but I knew if I had to I could put the herd on it. It must have been 400 pounds plus. It had a reddish highlight to its hair color. I'd never seen the face but this thing was one huge creature. 
It never knew I was there because it never looked my way or anything like that. At least I don't think so. This place I hunt always makes me feel like someone or something is watching me. It can creep me out at times. I've heard other strange noises there almost every time I'm in the area. Personally, I'm not scared of what's out there because I've never felt threatened. Thanks for listening to my story. Thanks for joining me on the Bigfoot Project. If you have a story you would like to share here, you can email me, Lynn Smith, at thebigfootproject at mail.com.